know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen, does it? AM 1420, WBSM presents Spooky South Ghost with your hosts, Tim Weisberg and Matt Boston. Good evening and welcome to Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here along with science advisor Matt Moniz and asylum assassin Matt Costa. We are here to talk with you about the paranormal as we are each and every Saturday night. And we are very excited for tonight's show because we're going to go deep into something that we don't normally talk that much about here on the show. That being the world of the Ouija. Coming up in a bit we'll be joined by Karen Dahlman. She is a Ouijaologist. I think I'm saying that correctly. Close enough. It's, I don't know how else she could say it, but she's a Ouijaologist, and she basically studies all things Ouija. And she's going to talk with us about the positive side of using Ouija boards, because we hear so many stories about the negative aspects of it. And we hear so many uh, warnings from our friends in the paranormal field telling us, you know, stay away from these things. These things are bad. They're portals to hell. You know, every time you use a Ouija board, Satan talks to you. I'm pretty sure Satan's got a lot more important things to do than to... You know, get yeah. involved with the game. Too busy talking to us through um, heavy metal music. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're Satan and you want to contact people, yeah. how are you going to do it? Hotel California. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. Grammy winning song like that. <laughs> exactly. Or at least you're going to do it through backwards Judas Priest records. Yeah. You know, with hidden messages like, hey, mom, my chair is broken, which obviously means the end of the world is upon us. That's you're how not I gonna, take it. Yeah. You're not going to waste around, uh, waste your time messing around with... Uh, a Parker Brothers game, essentially, which is what it is. Doesn't he have a room at Ozzy's house? Probably. I think he's like permanently installed in the guest house. They're in the same nursing home, I think. I didn't see him a lot during the. Uh, I didn't see him a lot during the Osborne's TV show, but I'm sure he was there. He's just camera shy, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of cameras, who's running? The, he was running the cameras. That's that it. could be it. Speaking of cameras, if you want to see what's going on in the Spooky Studio during the course of the show, just go to SpookySouthCoast.com, click on the Live Show tab uh, right there at the top of the page, and you'll see the drop-down menu and select the Live Show with uh, the chat room option, and you'll be able to jump into the chat room and interact with all of our friends there. Hello to all of our chat room buddies. And uh, you can also see what's going on in the studio as we have multiple cameras that we think are working. They weren't at the beginning. That kind of held oh, us up. Yeah, there, I think they're holding up pretty good. So far. Yeah. It, do you think maybe the fact that we have a vintage Ouija board here I, in the studio? I think it does. Might every, time we, every time we bring some sort of, or even talk about Ouija boards, um, something goes awry. Right. So that, that's um, probably our own fault. Then. I think so. But we want to thank our friend Aaron, who brought in this vintage Ouija board. Thanks now for messing everything up. You're welcome. <laughs> now, this is from the 1940s. Yes. And uh, it's something that your family owned for many years. Yes. I think it was my great-grandmother's, and then passed it on to my grandmother, and... Then when they passed away, I found it in the root cellar. And, of course, you said, what better way to put it to good use than to bring it in here in Spooky South Coast and have it screw up everything in the studio? Yes. It's probably me. I tend to screw everything up, though. No, no, it's not you at all. <laughs> this, this is pretty much how the show goes every week. Do you know us? <laughs> So, uh, but we want to thank you for coming and bringing in the board. We're going to try and use it throughout the course of the evening. Now, uh, I don't think it would make great radio if we just had you guys, you know, using the, the Ouija board. And I was kind of giving a play by play. But what we'll do is during the course of the discussion with our guest, Karen Dahlman, a little bit later on, you guys can kind of just pull the board out and try some things out. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask a few questions. I'll just turn down your mics and uh, you can let us know if anything's happening. And we'll also have a camera that we'll have uh, trained on it as well. But before we get into the discussion with Karen, I just want to cover a few things really quick here. Uh, one, of course, being that there are still some tickets available to our Haunting the Houghton event coming up next weekend at the Houghton Mansion in North Adams, Massachusetts. Uh, there are a few tickets left for both the Paranormal Party on Friday night and, of course, for the event itself on Saturday. They're available from our website, legendtrips.com. So if you go to that site and you click on the Haunting the Houghton event page, you'll be able to select whether you want to get the $149 ticket, which uh, is for the event and includes uh, an evening party on Friday evening at the Haunted Freight Yard Pub right down the street from the mansion. And then you can also select, if you just want to go to the event, that's $125. And Jeff and I were talking about the itinerary with Josh Mantello this week. And we're looking at spending over 12 hours in the Houghton Mansion itself. So you're going to be getting lectures during that time. You're going to be getting dinner, uh, a chance to, to converse amongst one another and with our guests, such as Dave Schrader from Darkness Radio, 
Ron Kolick from the New England Ghost Project, uh, Ann Kerrigan, his uh, his host from co-host from uh, New England. Uh, sorry, from the Ghost Ghost <laughs> Ghost Chronicles. <laughs> There's so many ghost shows that I've been talking to this week uh, for a variety of different things, but they're all m- melting together in my brain. His Ghost Chronicles co-host Ann Kerrigan will be there as well, and of course Josh Mantello, Andrew Lake. The whole spooky crew will be there, so it's going to be a great event. So check it out, legendtrips.com. Jeff Belanger. Well, of course, Jeff Belanger, that goes without saying. But we're going to also make sure that everybody has a chance to get in the Psychomantium Chamber, too. So if you want to, we're not going to force you, but if you want to. So, uh, again, legendtrips.com is the website. And if you go there right on the, the main page of the site, you'll see the Haunting the Houghton event. The tickets are for sale. Get them now while you can because uh, by the end of the week, they are sure to be completely gone. And there are still some rooms available in North Adams for that weekend. I was on Priceline.com earlier and I saw a bunch of uh, $40, $50 motel rooms. If that's the route you want to go, all the way up to you know nice $150 hotel rooms. So it's all on what level of accommodations you need. I can tell you that when you're getting home at 2.30, 3 o'clock, coming back from the mansion, uh, you don't really care. You just want to bed. I still want to sleep in the thing. Well, maybe we can work that out. And uh, something else we want to make everybody aware of as well, uh, that is that there is now a spooky South Coast blog on WBSM.com. If you go to WBSM.com and you go to all the different show host blogs, uh, Spooky South Coast now has a page there. And uh, I've written a few blog posts already, uh, including my own personal thoughts on the Ouija, which I'll probably share some of them here tonight. But if, if I don't, then feel free to go to the blog and read about them. And uh, I also have up a blog post about an interesting event that occurred last night in Middleborough where another paranormal group investigated Middleborough Town Hall and there was a huge amount of media coverage, so I kind of weighed in with my two cents worth on that. So uh, definitely check out wbsm.com slash spooky dash South Coast if you want to check that out. And I know a lot of our, our listeners aren't on Twitter. They can't follow us at Spooky SC or at Smoking Monkeys or at Science Advisor or at Tim Weisberg. So if you do want to see some of these really cool news stories that Matt Costa puts up on the Spooky South Coast news feed, uh, Twitter feed, it's right up there on the Spooky South Coast blog at WBSM.com. So you can read stories such as bacon condoms. Yeah, I thought that was uh, quite inventive. It, it kind of threw me off a little bit because... I it was a little gross, to be honest. It is. <laughs> it is. And, and really, that's kind of the one time that... Like, food does not be in, need to be involved. Exactly. You know, if if I'm George Costanza, if I'm in in the mood and I'm getting you know freaky yeah. or whatever it is that I'm going to do, and bacon is involved, <laughs> that's not the area that's, I'm thinking it. Yeah, would go. this seems a bit distracting. Right, yeah. I'm thinking, that is not going to attract women. That I don't know. I mean, a lot of women are fans is a of bacon. Gay condom because oh. it should be chocolate. Ladies love bacon. No, no, maybe turkey bacon. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Bacon's taken off in popularity. Lately. Is it hickory smoked? I heard they say that if you wrap things in bacon, it's better, but... (laughs) Right. I I just don't know how I would feel about going into the act, you know, with my sensitive male areas feeling like a clam's casino. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not even going to make any any pork jokes. All right, so let's leave that alone. (laughs) But again, just go to wbsm.com slash spooky-south coast to follow along on the blog. Do me a favor, too. If you're connected with Facebook, give it a like. Let's get the, uh, let's get the, the word out there that it's out there. And uh, again, I promise to have all kinds of comments and, and news and different weird little things up there throughout the week. So always check it out every day. And uh, don't be afraid to jump into the comment section and share your own thoughts as well. So I think that we, uh, we're probably ready to delve into the world of the Ouija. But before we do that, one more quick news thing. I really wanted to have the person on uh, whose children found this. Uh, So hopefully we can work that out coming up uh, somewhere down the line. But this caught my attention last night. In Lakeville, some children were out playing in the woods, and they found what appears to be the remains of a human foot. Now, Moniz, I had you take a quick look at the photo that was posted on Facebook, which uh, we're going to try to get on SpookySouthCoast.com, and I'll, I'll definitely have a blog posting about it uh, later on the, in the week on WBSM.com. But there was a lot of debate from some of the people about whether or not it was definitely a foot or a hand, but that's definitely a foot, right, in your opinion? From what I can tell, I haven't really seen detailed photographs, but it definitely does look like a foot. And, and the police are now in possession of this, so... 
uh, it's, it has been turned over to the authorities. But I was hoping, if it hadn't been, that maybe you know you might have been able to offer some DNA help. But I'm sure if the police have it, they'll take care of that. Yeah, now. they they're in control, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll foot the bill. No yeah. pun intended. Uh, so you know we'll follow along with that story. But it, it's it, it's fascinating to me looking at it. It's sitting in a dustpan, so it's a smallish foot. Uh, I'm guessing by the or by a large the, dustpan could be. But uh, I'm guessing that it's it's probably a smallish human foot. So if I was to guess, it would say a young female. So we'll we'll keep you up to date on it. But I don't know. I mean, I can only imagine what it must be like being those kids and finding that out in the woods. And uh, I'm sure they were pretty. They're probably more excited about finding it than they were traumatized. But uh, hopefully, hopefully they're okay. And uh, again, we will follow up more with it. Keep tuned to the Spooky South Coast blog. And we'll have more information because I don't I don't want to get too much into it without having the person whose children found it join us on the air. So maybe we'll work that out uh, for the coming weeks. All right. What I'm thinking right now is that we should take a break. And during that break, we will get our guest, Karen Dolman on the phone. We'll talk more about the world of the Ouija. And, of course, we want to definitely have your thoughts and opinions throughout the course of the show. So call in at any point, 508-996-0500, 1420 You can email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com or jump in the chat room on SpookyTV at SpookySouthCoast.com and share your thoughts there as well. And I'm sure we'll get some emails and some Facebook posts and some tweets and uh, different ways where people are going to communicate with us to try to get some questions for the Ouija board. So uh, I'll have Matt and Matt handle that because even though Erin brought it in, she doesn't want anything to do with it. No. You, you've never tried even once? You know, maybe if it's here, I'll do it. But I'm oh, not, I don't want to do it in my own home. Now she's, she's uh, well, I don't know, this place. with all the <laughs> Unless luck, there's a bacon condom involved. We've had this place blessed, i got to tell you. We have had our, our friend Keith Johnson, who's a demonologist, come in here and actually perform a blessing, a cleansing on this studio to get us over some of the problems we've had. In the More past. than once, actually. Yeah, and it's almost about time for another one. So uh, we will take a break during that time. Uh, we will pray <laughs> and hope that uh, everything goes all well as we talk about Ouija with tonight's guest, Karen Dahlman. In the meantime, just go to SpookySouthCoast.com or the Spooky South Coast blog on WBSM.com to find more about Karen. We'll be right back coming up in just a few minutes here on Spooky South Coast. The incredible Burt Wonderstone, the new magical comedy starring Steve Carell, is a surprisingly likable mess. Burt is a much picked upon little boy who finds salvation in an instructional magic kit. Together with his misfit of a best friend, he learns the ropes, literally. And the next thing we know, Bert and Antoine, that's Steve Buscemi, well, they're veteran headliners in Las Vegas, and they're bored. But when a gritty street magician played with maniacal intensity by Jim Carrey shows up and the team breaks up, Bert must find his real magic all over again. Oh, and there's a girl, that's Olivia Wilde, and a mentor, that's Alan Arkin. Bert Wonderstone, look, it's not an incredible movie, but it is, despite a few questionable bumps along the way, kind of sweet and kind of fun. From the TheMovieMinute.com, I'm Joanna Langfield. Some exclusions may apply. If you're an athlete of any kind and you know about joint pain, muscle pain, and even arthritis, nearly half of all Americans suffer from some kind of pain due to chronic inflammation. Here's legendary golfer and a Natablock ambassador, Fred Couples. This is Fred Couples for a Block. It's been great for me and could be for you too. A Block is a breakthrough supplement scientifically proven to quickly and effectively reduce inflammation and get rid of your pain fast. For me, a Block has been phenomenal. I started taking a Block and within a few days, I simply started feeling better. 
a Natablock was an amazing find for me, and I continue to feel better. Pick up your supply of a Natablock today by visiting your local GNC store or going to GNC.com. A Natablock is a GNC top selling product and five star rated. Even better, become a Gold Card member and get an instant 20% off. That's right, 20% off for becoming a Gold Card member. But hurry, this offer expires soon. So get a Natablock today at a GNC store near you or GNC.com. Attention passengers, we're approaching great deals at the Old Navy Spring Upgrade Sale for five, ten, and fifteen dollars. I can't wait! Me neither! Famous graphic tees for everyone are five dollars. Wow! How about some new shorts? Oh yes! Upgraded shorts are ten dollars for kids and just fifteen for adults. Wow! Anyone have a parachute? No, but Old Navy has a great pair of shorts. Hurry into Old Navy now. Famous graphic tees for the whole family for five dollars. Kids shorts are ten dollars, adults just fifteen. Plus hundreds of other items are on sale. Old Navy, come on, come on. Valid three twenty one to three thirty one. Select styles only. Only the Home Depot has kiddo worry free smoke alarms from just twenty four ninety seven. A sealed lithium battery keeps these alarms working for ten years, so you never change batteries. With four models for specific rooms in your home, like a lighted hallway alarm or voice alert bedroom alarm, upgrade your smoke alarms and set your worries aside for ten years. Kiddo worry Worry free smoke alarms starting at just $24.97. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. US only see store for details. Hello. Hey man, you up? No. Wake up, I need to talk to you. I think your house is haunted. Hey, come on, it's 2 30 in the morning. I can't sleep in here, man. I'm scared. All right, welcome back to Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here along with science advisor Matt Moniz and the silent assassin Matt Acosta. And we've got our friend Aaron here in the studio with us as well. And we are ready to talk about Ouija with our guest tonight, Karen Dahlman. She received her BA and MA degrees from the University of New Mexico. She began her professional career as an art psychotherapist, licensed counselor, hypnotherapist, and artist. She later relocated to Southern California and entered the high-technology industry of telecommunications as an entrepreneur. She has a strong spiritual connection to her spirit friends from beyond, and she speaks to her connection and communication with them throughout her life. Highly experienced as a Ouijaologist, one who studies the use of the board, she teaches others about the positive benefits of using this tool as a means for expanding and deepening one's world and expression within it. And we are so glad that we have joining us on the phone, Karen Dahlman. Good evening, Karen. How are you? Hi, Tim. I'm doing well tonight. How are you? Oh, we are spectacular, as we say here. Uh, great. Well, happy uh, Eve of Easter to you and everybody. And to you as well. Thanks. So how does one become a professional Ouijaologist? Because uh, most people that I know try to stay away from these things as much as they can, but I'm assuming to consider yourself a, a full-fledged Ouijaologist, you spend a lot of time with these boards. It's very, very hard. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I've been doing it many years. Um, in fact, it's going on 40 years about right now. And it's, it's a matter of, it's not that I do it all the time. There's times when I might do it five times a year. There's times when I might do it uh, once a week. It depends on, on where I am uh, w with the people that are around me that can do it with me. And it also depends upon what I'm working on. And, and I do use it for um, means of personal growth and development. Um, evolution, and I mean evolution like of, of your spirit and soul to find out more about um, maybe your life's calling, uh, maybe get some clarity and guidance in your life, and, and really it's, it's, ne it's never used as a panacea though, so it's not to rely on, but it's to use to help support you through life. Now, when it does have this negative stigma attached to it, and, and I know that a lot of people uh, can't overcome that, and they can't bring themselves to even come near board. We have someone here with us in the studio, Erin, a friend of ours, who brought in her vintage board from the 1940s, and she's never actually used it because she, she doesn't want to. She's uh, oh, kind, of afraid of, uh, kind of afraid of it. What do you say to somebody like that who has an inherent fear of these boards? I would say don't do it. Um, and, and what I would say, so there's a fear, and the fear is, as, as you know, to him, it's, it came out from some of the exorcist movies, exorcist, um, mm -hmm. which were in the 70s and 80s and 90s, right? Um, before that, it was like a parlor game, and then you played it more lightly. However, it's always been a, an oracle that's been used um, seriously, too, throughout the ages. But if you're afraid of it, what happens is 
your light vibration comes through this portal. So if you have trepidation, that's okay. But if you have a genuine fear, you don't want to work with the board. And I think work with it because it's not a game. We're not playing it. We really are working with it. But if you guys, I saw the board. It's a beautiful board. I have that same board in my collection. I have a Ouija collection. Um, I have a 1940s. I actually have a couple of 40s boards sitting right here with me right now. They look a little different. But, you know, there's really a process that we must go through when we use this tool of divination, of communication, um, be, um, because you want to have a certain type of vibration come through. Yes, negative vibration can come through, and yes, positive. And you can limit um, what does not and doesn't come through. Is there uh, a, you know, I said that it's not a game, and, but is there a difference in your mind between some of these, you know, spirit boards that were created years ago and the ones that are being mass produced by Parker Brothers today? Oh, not at all. I mean, it, so Tim, here's a, here's a funny thing that, that I've done in the past. I'll be somewhere and somebody says, well, I'd really like to get some information on this. Maybe they want to talk to a dead relative or they want to get some guidance from their higher self. I'll pull out a paper bag. A typical paper bag you get at the grocery store. I'll open it up, or even a cardboard, and I will put the letters on there. I'll put the numbers on there, yes and no, and and there and that works. It's just a tool of communication. Yes, they're sold as games, but yet they have such deeper meaning. If we give that reverence and respect to them, then so much more. They're so much more than a game. But like I said, I can use a paper sack, turn over a shot, not a shot glass, a double old-fashioned glass. And I can talk to any, any different entity and consciousness out there. So really, I mean, as we said, it's it's more in the intention of how you're going to use it. Uh, and I, I'm sure that if if some people decide to just use it as a game, uh, they're probably not giving it the full-fledged concentration that it might take for something to come through. Uh, the word is perfectly used with intention. And that's the word I use a lot when I, when I talk about the Ouija board. It's the intention of the users, of the operators. That would be the intention of the two people gathered with the board. I don't recommend one person, by the way, but two, um, you get a balance of energy. You, you have a witness, and you have less likely chance that you're pushing it. By yourself, it's just sometimes it's too hard to control your own motor, motor muscle movements that may move it around. So I, I do two people. But, yeah, it's the intention, the focus. It's the energy you come to the board with. I mean, if you're super tired, don't do it. If you're, it's been drinking under any kind of influence, um, that alters your state, don't do it. Um, if you're angry, don't do it. You're going to get matched vibration. That is how the, the universe works. It's it, like attracts like. It's a, it's a law of physics, and that is how the board works the same way. It's the same principles. Interesting that you use that term, matched vibration, because... Uh, a lot of the media reports that come from Ouija board use will be, you know, these 1980s stories that we hear about the heavy metal kids hanging out in their bedroom by themselves, and they're already feeling uh, angst and, and depression, and they're already having these uh, typical, you know, teenager feelings compounded by the fact that they grew up like my co-host Matt Moniz here, <laughs> so they're already a little bit off. But uh, so they a little. <laughs> so they have all these uh, all this emotional baggage that they're bringing with them into the use of the board. So maybe it's not a surprise that the uh, spirits that they're contacting and the messages that they're receiving are kind of reflective of whatever dark place they might be in. Great point. That's, that's a great point, and that and, and I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. You know, it's not like you have to live perfect, live a perfect life to do the Ouija uh, in, a, in a positive light. Um, what I'm saying is. Um, you know, we're human, but I think when we come to the board, it's like having a respect. Having a respect and reverence. It's like if you walk into a holy place, there's a respect and reverence you feel because of the energy that's been left in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's the same thing with the board. I, I really respect the fact that there's this other, I say other beyond, there's, there's this consciousness and entities that exist with us, but we just don't see them. So, and always hear them with our audible our hearing apparatus in our head, <laughs> just for better use of words, and we can't just always see them. But this is the way for me to know that they are there and talk to them. Now, I do see them, I do hear them sometimes, and I don't need the board to do my work, but I use the board because it's become a great tool. A great tool, and I, and I use it mostly with other people. So I will always with people, but people that come into my circle, because they might want to get some clarification, it's easier for them to see to see it on a board that they just say, oh, I think this is going to happen. And it's a little more concrete for them. And they can also participate and learn at the same time. Well, taking a step back from Ouija itself uh, for right now, let's take a look at your own background. I mean, you, you seem to be somebody who's always kind of been an outside-the-box type of thinker. 
I would say that's putting it lightly. Yes, I go out on a limb. <laughs> I go outside the box. That's right. Yeah, I started, as you said, as a, as a psychotherapist, using art many, a few, what to say, a few years ago. And um, I, what I learned, okay, so if I can just share a little bit about, about my background as a therapist. Sure, please. I, thank you. I specialized in uh, issues, of, it's actually called post-traumatic stress disorder. And what my specialty was was multiple personality disorder, you know, like somebody like Carrie, mm-hmm. but, but let's just say that it's now called uh, DID, which is, which is a um, dissociative identity disorder. So the names change in the, in the DSM R4 or 5, the different diagnostic statistical manual. So I, that was my specialty. So I work with people who were extremely abused. When I say extremely abused, we're talking about maybe locked up, cut, raped, um, never fed food, stuck in a closet, it, it, um, really some horrific stuff, and that became a specialty. Now, because of that, I, I got to see a lot of very crazy stuff, and I say crazy, I'm not just in the person, just how screwed up um, humankind can be, but also the power of our body, the power of our mind, the power of our soul, and the power of your somatic response, that means your body responses and how it holds memory. What I would see, and I'll give you an example. I think I shared this before on, a, on another show. Um, for example, I had a client once, and it was in a group session with other people that had the same disorder. And as she was, was doing her artwork and, and recounting um, an incident when she was a child, she was literally burnt with a cigarette up and down her arm. And as she recanted this, recounted this in her drawing and in her conversation, the wealth of the cigarette burns appeared on her arm. So now I'm seeing things that are like, you read about this in textbooks, but they're right in front of me. And so I really learned about the power of what we hold inside of us. So if I could find a way with any kind of work I've ever done, find a way to help people get in touch with that, make sense of it, somehow release it somehow or incorporate it so it's not coming up at weird times in our life where it screws them up, um, but helps they can grow from it, that's what I do. That's what it's all about for me. So approaching the Ouija, kind of along these same lines of some extreme stuff, I mean, talk to, like, you know, I, I've spoken to fetuses, I've, sp- I, I've spoken to consciousness that are, have never been incarnated, um, consciousness that are beyond, um, considering our universe, just all kinds of interesting things, not just dead people. And, and from there, I can help people learn that there's so much more to the world outside of themselves and so much more to, to their own inner world that they can learn from this experience of doing this kind of work. So it seems like, uh, you know, you're just a natural-born communicator and that you're a natural-born, um, you just have this intuitive ability to be able to, to reach out and communicate with people and that the, the use of the board is kind of just an extension of that, whereas some of us, you know, we're, we're using the board uh, kind of to overcome our own uh, deficiencies in being able to communicate. Well, yes and no. I mean, yeah, me too. I mean, when I started using it, uh, um, yeah, I saw things, but I didn't really know how to communicate always with, with these things. And it became a way to start doing that. It opened up the portal for me. And, and more work, and not just doing it on the Ouija, but more personal growth I did on myself, spiritual work on myself. Uh, and I'm not religious. I'm, I'm spiritual. And the more of the deeper I went within myself and outside of myself, through the board, without the board, it opened this portal up more. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a tool to use to develop your psychic abilities. It's a tool to use to develop your evolution of just who you are, um, how you want your life to be, um, get to know yourself better. I, I think we are only as, we only live the potentials that are in us if we get to know all those scary places in us too. So the more we know those scary places and those positive places can, and put it all together somehow, our world becomes that much larger. And, that, and that's what my book's about, too, which, which you know, Luigi helped me. He was like a colleague when I wrote my book as well. And, and I think that there's a lot of um, misconception about the Ouija in terms, too, of its history. Uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. know it as being, you know, on the toy shelf at Target, and they don't understand that this is something that goes well beyond, you know, when it was mass-produced. Uh, this is something that's been around for a long time. I mean, the, the ancient Egyptians had a version of a, of a talking board. They did, so the Greeks, so the Chinese. You're absolutely right. And there was always talking, speaking oracles. You know, they would go to, a, to uh, Adelphi, and they would go speak to the, um, you know, with looking in water, talking to the priestess that was there. They would speak to somebody, you know, like a psychic in a way, but they had ways of doing definition. You know, people were with tea leaf readers many, many eons ago. But the board, you know, using a tool like this has been around in just different forms, 
but the one we know today really was like in the late 1800s, and, and that's the one that's kind of come crept up and moved through our culture, and it's quite quite interesting how it's really stayed with us, um, and it had a resurgence again, you know, with some of the scary movies, but also that's when it kind of became demonized, and I, and I think we start demonizing things in, in our life, it's like we're really missing out on what the potential could be somewhere. Right, because I mean, I love the old Norman Rockwell painting and, and some of these, yeah. uh, you know, vintage photographs you can find online of, of when people would kind of just gather around the spirit board, you know, it was like, it was just another way of uh, entertaining the family in a time before we had, you know, mass communication. It was a way to, to sit around and, and be together. And it was also a way for couples to, to get together and, uh, and maybe get a little closer than they should through, uh, through propriety. Yeah, it's true. And I have one we did. I'll tell you, this one's a really cool one. It's in the 40s, and it is actually in the form of a tray. It has little edges that come up, and they would bring their co- cocktails. They were doing cocktails, and little toddies out after dinner, a little, you know, their little, little drink, and, they, and, their, and whatever else they were serving, dessert. But set it out of the tray to serve the, 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 the drinks and the dessert, and then they'd play Ouija. And I would say play because it was more play mm-hmm. then. But, but yeah, this, oh, uh, this is another thing I haven't really spoken about too much. Just, I just thought of it right now. In, in the, the era of, the, of Dadaism, which is a, a movement in art, mm-hmm. and you're talking about Salvador Dali is, is, is one of the big Dadaism people most people would recognize, they would mess around with Ouija boards then. They used it to learn to push their minds to go beyond again what their normal way of thinking or what they think is out there. Because, you know, they were drawing some really avant-garde images that, was, that really changed the movement of art. So the surrealists, the Dadaists, they were messing around with the Ouija, 30s, 40s, and that, that era, 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, really to, to push themselves uh, to see, you know, how far they could take their art by using the Ouija and just learning there's so much more consciousness out there. So it brought people together sitting around in a circle in a relaxed environment. And it helped people open up their horizons. It was basically the marijuana of its day. It was exactly <laughs> like a drug, I guess. Yes. And uh, and the only thing is, you know, it, it could also just be as addicting as well. I'm sure. Oh yes, yes. I've seen that happen to people before. <laughs> you know, there's something really um, novel about it. First, there's something really uh, appealing about it. It, it when you want to try it, and you start getting some answers, and it kind of draws you in. It can. This is where you have to have boundaries. This is why I say um, I have this whole ritual, if you will, that I go through when I work on the board and with people that are with me, and it's about how to do with breathing, um, working on the heart area, doing an incantation, almost like a meditation or prayer. I don't know if this is sound religious because it's not, but it's a way of setting the stage. You have to do some kind of ritual to get into the space of this is reverent. I'm going to respect this energy. I'm going to open this. Oh, this hole, this portal, and this well, pick up the phone and, and use it. It's like a, you know, it's it's one nine hundred call Ouija kind of thing. <laughs> and then you also, when you work with the Ouija, you, you, then you close it at the end, almost like the way you opened it. So an opening and a closing, and that is paramount. I've learned over the years in working forward. And I think what happens a lot of people get sucked into it, don't know how to open it, don't know how to close it, and then all kinds of things get set up. Energies, energies get up. And they get earthbound, and then they already are earthbound, but they even become more stuck because now they see this as a way to communicate with somebody because they might be walking around not even ever, ever contacting humans or even they're, they're alone so often, and I find them alone or lost in the dark and they don't know where they are. And once they see there's this opening, there's a light there, they want to come to it and communicate. And if we don't close it, open it correctly, I've seen all kinds of havoc. I've seen, I've seen some really strange things and, and experienced and felt some strange things. Well, we are talking about the Ouija board with Ouijaologist Karen Dahlman. And if you have any questions, we'll be uh, glad to take them. 508-996-0500, 1-877-996-1420. Email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com, or jump in the chat room on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com. And we've got about five minutes left uh, in this hour. Uh, but coming up in the second hour, Karen, we're going to actually pull out this vintage board, and we're going to have the two mats kind of, uh, while we're talking, uh, they'll, they'll kind of see what, what happens. And we'll also take some questions from the audience for the board as well. And uh, I want to talk with you more coming up in the next hour, too, about the process of writing your book. 
uh, which is titled The Spirit of Creativity, Embodying Your Soul's Passion. And I see that's available at Amazon.com if people want to check that out during the break. Uh, but we'll talk more about the process of, of how your spirit friends kind of helped you with that. And I also want to talk with you about your professional life and about how your work with the Ouija has both benefited that and, and maybe impacted that as well. Because uh, I'm just thinking, you know, somebody who is into the telecommunications field, you know, <laughs> you're on the cutting edge of communication, uh, but at the same time, you're using a very old form of it too. So it's it seems like you've got your feet firmly planted on, on both sides of that. It's a great dichotomy. It, 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 that's really quite humorous to me myself when I think about it. Yeah, I've got this wireless world, and you know, like you said, cutting edge, high tech, we're always upgrading our, our systems, our cell sites. And then I've got this old archaic uh, divination tool that I, that I use, probably even better than my, than my cell phone sometimes. I, I think the, the, the um, however, <laughs> I will say just like your cell phones drop, so does the, so does the communication on the board drop. And Very some, similar. Sometimes you're using the planchette and it spells up, can you hear me now? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but I will ask you this uh, before we take a break for the news. There, there's a lot with the modern age and with the apps that we can put on our phones and our tablets and everything. There's a, a an increased uh, number of Ouija ones popping up, uh, seemingly by the day. And I don't know if you've had the opportunity to use any of those Ouija apps and see if you've had the same level of success as you have with the actual boards. So interesting, you bring that up. Um, one of my business partners. I uh, just provided me a bunch of Luigi apps on my iPad, and I looked at them briefly, but I have messed with them in the past. You know what? They're not going to do what the board does, mm -hmm. because it, first of all, you push it yourself. <laughs> There's no success, but they're really, they're really well, some of them are really cute, uh, cleverly created. Some are kind of spooky and scary, but they're just kind of, they're just fun. That is a game. That's right. nothing but a game. Yeah, because I've used a few of them, and I find them to be quite terrible. So if anybody could figure out a way to make an app work, it would be you, I would think. I would love that if we could figure that out. Yeah, why don't I? Exactly. But if you do, make sure that it's available for Android, too, because I don't like to pay for apps, but I can help it. And I have an Android, too, right now, so I, I would need both. There you both, go. Both. So uh, n now with the with the book and uh, w with uh, the success that you've had from the book, uh, are your spirit friends kind of uh, – coming through and giving you ideas for, for another book? Oh, absolutely. And, and in fact, um, yeah, when, when I published this book, it published just last November. However, I did write the book quite a few years ago when I was a therapist. Never published it, but I decided the time was right. And what happened is, they're thrilled. All my spirits from the other side are thrilled about it, and now we're doing another book. I say, we, they give me ideas, and, and I'm off. I'm off and running. And it's, uh, it's uh, called The Alchemical Woman Becoming the Queen. It's really about because my background is again with women and women issues, is about women really learning to embrace all aspects of themselves and the whole process, the alchemical process, just like the old romantic science issues to go through, to transform base metal into gold, to become their own philosopher's stone. And you do that by the balance of duality within yourself. This book's a really exciting book. I'm doing a lot of work around it with women. I'm writing it, and I'm doing a lot of women's groups, too. But the other book that's coming out um, that I'm working on, too, is a book about Ouija and the other side. And that's directly from the questions I get and some of the experiments different people have asked me to do. And I'm doing a, a Ouija study now, and um, it, it's just growing. And, and it'll, that's going to be a really exciting book, too. And I hope to get them both out here, with both within the next year. Excellent. If not sooner. All right. Well, you can check out again at Amazon.com if you want to find The Spirit of Creativity embodying your soul's passion check that out during the break also don't forget you can go to legendtrips.com as well if you want to purchase tickets to our upcoming haunting of the houghton event and uh well i'm sure there'll be some ouija boys in attendance there that we can try out and uh, of course we'll also have the psychomantium chamber open for people to test that out as well and we'll have hours and hours of ghost hunting within the haunted houghton mansion so uh, you can go to legendtrips.com to check out that so do that during the break if you'd like. And also, don't forget, the blog, Spooky South Coast, has its own blog on the WBSM website. Just go to wbsm.com slash spooky dash south coast, and you'll be able to read my personal thoughts on the Ouija or my personal experiences, which are very limited. But uh, I share them up there in the blog post, so check that out. And also, that's the place to go all week long to find out more about the show. Matt Costa tweets out some interesting news stories, some weak and weird type stuff on our Twitter feed, at SpookySC. So you can go there and, and catch all the news there. But if you don't use Twitter, you can check it out right there on the side of the blog. It's linked right up there. So uh, And uh, Matt, we'll figure out how to put a link to the blog okay. on the front page of SpookySouthCoast.com. We'll figure that out. Yeah, BJ's promise is going to help us figure it out. Oh, nice. So that we can kind of have reciprocal, uh, you know, a mirror of it kind of on our site too. Cool. 
because we can't figure this stuff out on our own. We're, yeah. lu- we're lucky we get the site up. We're lucky we can change the picture every week of who the guest is. So uh, because uh, that that's pretty much the limit of our skills. But we're getting there. And, uh, and so BJ is going to help us learn even more. But again, WBSM.com, uh, Spooky-South Coast. Or you can just go right to the drop-down menu and find the Spooky South Coast page on WBSM.com as well. So we're going to take a break. Uh, the news is coming up. We're going to mess around with the Ouija board here in the studio a little bit. When we come back, we'll have more with our guest, Karen Dahlman, in just a few minutes here on Spooky South Coast. The station the South Coast turns to for local news, talk, weather, and sports. WBSM New Bedford, AM 1420, WBSM. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Sievertson. Now the painful wait for the results. Hundreds of former patients of Dr. Scott Harrington who lined up to be tested for hepatitis and HIV. The dentist was cited for dirty, rusty instruments, long-expired meds, and reused needles. Caitlin Snyder, spokesperson, Tulsa Health Department. Transmission of a hepatitis B virus um, in this type of occupational setting is rare. William Clark was tested. He says he was referred to Harrington by another dentist. I didn't see any evidence of the... You know of what they're saying. It, it, it was very nice, and but I didn't know what I was exposed to. Harrington could face criminal charges. With tensions still high, this North Korean newscaster announced there is a state of war between North and South Korea. <laughs> The White House says it's taking this latest threat seriously, but calls it another North Korean bellicose threat. In a video released by North Korea, one of the area's leader Kim Jong-un claims is within reach of his missiles is Austin, Texas, where Pastor Paul Lee lives. It was comical, because I doubt he knows where Austin you know, even is. Uh, it was probably something that was random. Pastor Lee has family living in South Korea. Immigration reform update, a tentative deal over a guest worker program. What wages would be paid, what industries covered, has been reached between leaders of big business and labor. That from a person familiar with the negotiations. ABC News senior Washington correspondent Jeff Zelaney. The labor unions have, uh, in years past, have made a lot of noise about this. So if they sign off with the chamber, with the business group, it really does sort of move the immigration debate forward. But, you know, this is just the Senate. This is just, I would say we're in the second inning here of the uh, ball game on immigration. But if this deal holds, it's significant. A spokesman for Nelson Mandela says the former South African president's had pneumonia, has had his lungs drained at an undisclosed clinic or hospital, and is breathing easier. Mandela's 94. You're listening to ABC News. From painting to mowing the grass to vacuuming, you'll spend hours maintaining your home. Here's one task to check off your to-do list. Changing smoke alarm batteries. Replace your older alarms with new Kitto worry-free smoke alarms. The sealed-in lithium battery lasts 10 years. The recommended life of an alarm. No more searching for a battery and no more low battery chirps. Head to the Home Depot and check that box for a decade with Kitto worry-free smoke alarms. Kitto, technology that saves lives. At Advance Auto Parts, getting oil and saving dough is your advance advantage. Right now, you can get a 5 plus quart jug, a Castrol conventional motor oil, plus a DriveWorks filter for just $19.99. That'll save you about $10 worth of dough. So fire up our deals oven and watch your dough rise. A Castrol conventional oil change for just $19.99. The advance advantage, only at Advance Auto Parts. See store for details. The plug will not be pulled from a man on life support at a hospital in Chula Vista, California, near San Diego. Cassell Macias has no insurance, has been in a coma for two months, and is showing no signs of life. ABC's Marianne Martinez. The 22-year-old remains on life support after his family waged a very public campaign to keep him alive. We felt robbed, you know, so we wanted to fight this. I mean, we looked high and low to see how we we're going to get this changed. His family says if an ethics committee at Scripps Mercy Hospital in Chula Vista had its way, he would be dead. Macias wound up in the hospital after a weight loss surgery in Mexico that led to a heart attack. He has severe brain damage. Pope Francis, in about three hours, presides over his first Easter Mass, says Pope. A legendary music producer whose songs you know from pop to rock to standards has died. Over a career that lasted more than half a century, Phil Ramone worked with musical greats like Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, Paul Simon, Tony Bennett, and dozens more, including Billy Joel. He knows his his stuff. He knows music. Uh, He's worked with so many genres. I mean, he was the guy who, who did the sound when Marilyn Monroe sang Happy Birthday to JFK. 
he was the guy. Ramon received a total of 33 Grammy nominations and won 14 awards, including a trophy for producer of the year in 1981. Ramon died in New York after suffering an aortic aneurysm. He was 72. Dear to Bryant, ABC News. This is ABC News. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is only going to get worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help at 1-800-334-5070. Our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. And we have an A-plus rating with the BBB, so get protected. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 1-800-334-5070. Chuck Severson, ABC News. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Wait, wait, mom, what? Huh? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a second, what? Huh? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Radio, a medium that has been pruned, honed, trimmed, winnowed, chiseled, bonsai, and deposited here today, ready to be moistened with the watering can of evolutionary jewel. This is the station the sound. Everything gets sold, even your shocks, so make sure you change your worn shocks at 50,000 miles. What are you doing? Put the top back on! Put the top back on! Uh, I think it's moving. Actual mileage may vary depending on driver ability, vehicle type, and the type of driving and road conditions. Purchase qualifying Monroe shocks or struts between now and April 30th and get a prepaid card worth up to $120 by mail-in offer. Restrictions apply. Learn more at Monroe.com. At Advance Auto Parts, getting oil and saving dough is your advance advantage. Right now, you can get a 5-plus quartz jug of Castro conventional motor oil plus a DriveWorks filter for just $19.99. That'll save you about $10 worth of dough. So fire up our deals oven and watch your dough rise. A Castro conventional oil change for just $19.99. The Advance Advantage, only at Advance Auto Parts. See store for details. In a new study, uh, it has some very interesting results. And not just in... Uh... This is Jack Peterson, one of the latest featured animals up for adoption at the Forever Paws Animal Shelter, 300 Linwood Street in Fall River. Asia is a one-year-old black and white female who's a boxer, American Stratfordshire Terrier mix. This friendly, high-energy girl can be hyper at times, but settles down nicely. Asia's lovable, knows her basic commands, and enjoys the constant companionship of humans. Ideally, she'd be happiest in a home being the only dog, even though she gets along well with others. Otter is a one-year-old black brindle male English bulldog, American Stratfordshire Terrier mix. He's friendly, sweet, and loves attention. He'll lie in your lap like a big baby. Otter enjoys playing with other dogs and has an easygoing personality. For more information, call the shelter at 508-677-9154 or visit the website foreverpaws.com. Both pictures can be viewed on this site. WBSL presents Spooky South Coast with your hosts Tim Weisberg and Matt Costa.
Welcome back to our number two of Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here, along with the silent assassin Matt Costa, science advisor Matt Moniz, and our in-studio guest tonight is our friend Erin, who brought in her vintage Ouija board. We will be talking more about Ouija with our guest Karen Dahlman. But uh, right now, we have the board ready to go here in the Spooky Studio. And we have uh, Matt Costa and Matt Moniz are over there kind of manning it. And they're, they're working out all the kinks. They'll let me know when they're ready to go, and we'll throw it up on the camera. Uh, there it is. Wow, that's you guys got a great shot out of that. Ingenious of you, I have to say. And you can check it out on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com. If you just go to our website, click on the Live Show tab at the top, and then you'll see the drop-down menu, and that will allow you to see Spooky TV, and you can see what's going on here in the studio and hear the show as well through WBSM.com as it's happening, and you'll be able to see what goes on with the board. As And they're just going to kind of mess around with it. And... You know, the mics are on, so you might hear some of the questions that they might be asking. Uh, as, as we're discussing with Karen, they'll, they'll just ask in a soft manner. And uh, we'll take questions from you as well, so you can uh, send us any thoughts that you might have uh, for the board. I'm trying to monitor the chat room over here on my phone because our, we're using all of our available monitor space uh, <laughs> for monitoring the Spooky TV. But uh, you can also email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com. And uh, you can tweet us as well, at SpookySC on Twitter. So uh, we'll try to get those questions out there while we're talking with Karen. And and Erin is here, and it's her board. And maybe she'll venture over there if she wants to, but we're not going to force it to. We don't force anybody to do anything they don't want to do on the show, except if it's the two co-hosts. Them, I say, you guys are using a Ouija board tonight. And there's no question about it. But also because I know they're the two guys that would have no problem doing it either. Because I've actually used a board with Matt Costa once with very little success. And uh, I know that Moniz has used them plenty of times. When I told that story about the headbanging 1980s youth that was sitting in his room by himself, I was talking about Moniz. I know you told me never to share those stories on the air, but, you know. <laughs> you were the one that told me that when you spun Judas Priest backwards and told you, hey, mom, my chair is broken. All right, so they're going to have the Ouija cam going over there from time to time, and, and uh, they're going to ask some questions as well. And we'll get right back into the discussion ourselves with tonight's guest, Karen Dahlman. And Karen, I know that you uh, probably have done numerous interviews uh, during the course of promoting this book that you've written entitled The Spirit of Creativity and Embodying Your Soul's Passion. But I'm wondering, has anybody tried to use a board while you were a guest on their show before? No, nope, this will be the first, and it's... And quite exciting, actually, and, you know, I'd really like you guys to have great success with it, so I, I could definitely make some suggestions, and I, I also sure. want to, I mean, I can actually help your audience learn to open and close this portal, as well as how to set it up. Would, would you like me to help with that? Oh, that would be great. Great, great, great. So when you're ready to do it, I, I'd like to, to, to get centered and focused, and I can actually walk you through, similar to what I do, but it'll be more a little quicker, but, but it still does the same effect, and when, you just let me know when you want me to do oh, that. And, and let's, let's do it right now. We're ready. So let me, okay, you have, you have the double mats in there, mat and mat, right? Yes. Okay, the double mats. Both of you all put your feet on the floor and kind of relax your bodies. And then what, you, what I want you to do is just take deep breaths in and throw those breaths all the way down into the floor, down into the earth. And I want you to do two or three. And as you do that, just kind of let things shake off. And as you do that, just imagine this white light that surrounds the board. And I want you also to imagine the white light that surrounds yourself and the planchette. When I say imagine, it, you don't have to keep your mind there. Just when I say it, just quickly see it and then you let it go. Uh, it is exactly. The candle burning is nice. It sets up the ambiance. It's a light. So it's perfect. Imagine that light around that planchette. And then what I'd like you to do, now this might seem a little, little stranger, I want you both just to grab hands across the board. And this is what, this is what people at home can do, too. Can you grab hands right now and hold hands? They are. They, they were holding hands off camera before. Oh, holding so romantic. <laughs> so romantic of you guys. Perfect. Hold your hands for a moment. And just, I want you to hold this, and I want you to set an intention here. And what I mean by that, let's set an intention, hold your hands, and let's state... We only ask that things that come from the white light can come through here. Only that which seeks universal truth and knowledge. We ask only that kind of vibration to be able to come through and speak to you. And so it is. Now you can break your hands. 
I usually go into a little bit more than that, but mm-hmm. just to give you an idea, there's like a little prayer or meditation or incantation. Now we've opened it, and now the next thing you'll do is you'll put your hand on the planchette, and you, go, you want to touch them really, really lightly on both sides of them. That's right. And, <laughs> and you get a one person hogging it. And you want, you want both of their hands, they're asking? Yeah, and you try to get, maybe, yeah, get at least three or four fingers on there, get it perfect. And then what you would do is when you open it up, I always open with, is there a message for Tim or Matt or for the owner of the board? Is there a message for any of you tonight as you have your hands on this board? And, and then that- you feel like a little bit of a vibration, and you'll feel some slight movement. And the thing is to trust that. And it's oh, hard at first, and it will go slow. Oh, I just opened the lettuce for <laughs> Wow, we're already getting spirits coming through vocally. <laughs> or somebody forgot to turn off the, com- the commercial computer. <laughs> Apparently, it's a smelly ghost. My apologies for that. Goodness. <laughs> Nobody can ruin a mood like me. I can't, I can't help you with that one. Sorry. <laughs> well, now, it, it, should they be completely void of movement? Because I've seen some people who start a session by kind of spinning uh, no. the planchette around the same way you would a glass at a table tipping session. No, my, my, my planchette spins around like that because that's my, that's my spirit guides coming through. Okay. It's not because I'm pushing it. So no, you, you allow the movement itself. Now, I didn't look at the bottom of that planchette, but I'm going to ask you, is there felt tips on the bottom of that planchette that help it move easier on the board? Yes. Because these older boards, their felt tips come off, and so they don't, you know, they don't slide as well. They're definitely you, on there still. Great. So you just feel a slight movement. And, you know, when I'm doing Ouija, it's, there's like, it's almost like there's three people there. There's me and the other operator and the energy that comes through. And it's like I have a conversation with them. I'm so used to it. It's like that's just like talking to you, Tim. I don't see you. Oh, well, I can see you on my little my computer here. But I don't see you, but I can talk to you and hear you. And that's what it is when I'm using the board. It's like another entity there. I don't see him at that point, but I definitely can hear him and feel him. I'm curious if the mats feel anything in their fingertips or anything in their hands um, or sweat. any energy at all from that planchette. Just curious. Just sweat. Well, that's... Well, you feel a vibration. No. You sweat. <laughs> but no, no vibration, no kind of... Uh, no, they're indicating not yet. Not yet, yeah. And so I've, I've, have the double mats I've done this before? Oh, yeah. Oh, and Moniz oh. has done it tons of times. Costa, how about you? Yeah, a couple times. Yeah. Oh, very great. Well, then you two should be able to get something going here. It might just take a little bit of time. It might be the fact that you're under pressure now. You've got this camera on you. I mean, that's pressure. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who are listening to this on podcast, uh, just go to youtube.com slash spooky south coast and you'll be able to see the video for yourselves of what's going on. And so what we'll do, Karen, is we'll leave them to kind of handle yeah. that and, and, and they can ask some questions and uh, you might hear them a little bit in the background. But uh, if anybody has a question for you directly, they'll come right up to the microphone. And guys, if something does start occurring, feel free to just let us know and, uh, and don't be afraid to interrupt us. Um, Please do. So we were talking uh, before the break about your book, The Spirit of Creativity, Embodying Your Soul's Passion. And at first glance, I mean, when you read uh, the information about the book that's up on Amazon, you know, it, you don't indicate that it was written through the help of the Ouija, but uh, it was. I mean, you, you did have some input from your spirit friends you, you've mentioned uh, here in, in putting this book together. That's, that's correct, Tim. And I personally don't do this. This book is not a book about the Ouija. Mm-hmm. And, that, and I didn't want it to be that. I wanted it to be a book that's really about, you know, people being able to create the life of the dreams using their own creative inherent um, inherent spark that's given to them at birth. It's, we're all creative beings, and I don't mean just artistic. I mean, we're creative. We can craft the life that we'd like to live. And it's really about tools and techniques that I used to use with my clients. I've used all these tools and techniques myself as well to do a lot of my own self-growth. And this book gives you really some plain, simple tactics um, how to really open up your life so you can live out your potentialities, to be the best you can be, to be your best self. That's what this book's about. And... Um, uh, it, it, this, how we can work with me on this was um, I have this, these ideas, and you know, I'm always, I've always been writing and, and public speaking and doing therapy and workshops and retreats and all those good things, and people always wanted more. So I decided to take a little bit of everything I did that helped me in my spiritual growth, but also that I found were, were, were proven concepts and techniques to help people just deepen themselves and, and grow from this uh, awareness of, of what they're learning about themselves. So what I would do is I would write, 
And then I'd go to the Ouija session, and I'd schedule sessions with Ouija, and they'd say, check back in two weeks, write, 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 come back, and we'll discuss. And I would come back, and didn't have to say, this is what I wrote, they know, because they're my spirit friends, they're around all the time, they're always with me, I can just call them up. And they would say, hey, not bad, but I want you to take this concept of, for example, uh, dualism. And I want you to talk about what, that, what, it, what dualism means in somebody's life. Let's talk about judgment, maybe talk about um, polarities within a person and how we feel bad or good, and let's get rid of the judgment of that. And then that's all they would say. And they'd say, plus, widen it with some of your own personal experiences, maybe something you went through or some examples and metaphors. Then I would go back and write and write, and they say, come back now in a week at 4 o'clock, we'll have an hour session, uh, Venus is in Jupiter, you know, that kind of thing, Venus is in Mars, and mm-hmm. that, it would be like alignment of planets, everything had to be just a certain energy, and then, I, and then we'd talk. And it was really interesting, because they, they were more like a, a colleague, and maybe uh, um, an editor in a way, or, or, or a, um, you know, a supportive person or element, as I was writing and, my book, and to like- help me get it. Kind of pardon the pardon the pun here, but almost like a sounding board for your ideas. A sounding board. That's so funny. Yes. <laughs> and you know, in the beginning of the book, all I say I don't ever say anything about Ouija's book. I just said my in the beginning of the book. I said in gratitude of spirit. I call my friends there side spirit. Their spirits. They're part of the matrix of the universe. Their spirit. And that's what the book's called, the spirit of creativity. Because I feel like it's that energy that we can tap into, which is, could be our higher self. It could be. Um, you know, dead people, it could be spirits, it's that we're all connected on some level. Once we match those vibrations of what we want in our life or who we want to talk to, that actually aligns itself with us. So that's why I say in gratitude to spirit. That's my little code way of saying thank you, friends, for the help you did and the work you did with me on this book. My next book will be a little more open about that. What you got to understand, Tim, is that this is new for me to come out in the public with this stuff, although close friends, my family, you know, they gave me the board when I was eight, know that I've been doing this. They know I do it. It's not like I hide it, but I don't go to, to my wireless clients and say, by the way, Ouija said we should probably consider this deal. <laughs> right, yeah. That, well, before we sign yeah. this deal, let's just consult the board. Yeah, let's go. Well, I would never. That's stupid. I would, in fact, I don't consult the board like that ever. I, again, I turn it around so it's only for personal growth at this point. And once in a while, people want to get in touch with a dead animal or, you know, a past, a, somebody that, a loved one that passed on, or, they, or something well, like that. But, that's an interesting thing that you just said. Uh, you can get in touch with a, a deceased animal through the use of a board? Absolutely, And they're yes. able to communicate thought with you? Can I blow your mind, Tim? You ready for this, Tim? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Okay. Listen up, everybody. I can talk to animals that are alive through the board. Oh, she's going to ask that. Can you talk to living yes. animals? Do you want to know why? It's a consciousness. It's an energy. It's a connection, once again. So you, it's not just talking to things that you can't see. It's not just talking to things that um, are dead. It's talking to all kinds of energies. And I'm really pushing the envelope this one. I'm doing all kinds of experiments. I don't want to say them all, but I'm doing. I recently spoke to somebody in a coma. Now, how can I prove it? I don't know if I can prove it. But there's some things they told me that I'm just waiting to see what happens. But whatever, you know, it's, it, you can talk to different kinds of levels of energies. So if I said to you, Tim... Is your higher self, meaning your, your greater energy source around your soul self, is it willing to talk to me? You say, yeah, I get permission, then I can tap into that. If it allows me, it wants to communicate, it may have a message for you. Hmm. And, and I don't have to be in the room with you. You could be, you know, a, 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 you could be on another continent. Well, you could have across the United States, but you could be like in Australia. Sure. I don't want to be there. The fact that you open that energy, you open up that, that portal to yourself, and, and this is the, the cool thing is it'll never say anything about you that you don't want revealed because it's in codes with you. It's got your back. So it only helps you with things that are going to, because that's the only way I use it. I don't use it in any way to pry on people or spy or, and then really I can't do it anyway. We all right. have free will and we, and because of our, our own and bounded intention about ourselves, we can block all of that. But it's really, it's really fascinating as I, as, it was probably in the last 25 years that I really took the board. I learned to do it seriously. And, and I, I saw fun, but, I, but when I said seriously, I learned the benefits of it. And there was a moment that I, experience I had with friends of mine that just blew my mind and woke me up and said, wow, I can use this for an emotional uh, healing, um, some type of a tool that will help people progress and grow. And actually, as my clients in the past, I told you about the person with the burn marks, could maybe release that energy, that pain around her that still welts her arm up when she goes into those memories. 
And I thought, wow, this is no different than talking to those alter egos, those, 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 those um, different parts of personality inside of somebody who had multiple personality disorder. It was no different than working because they're, they're, they're not always conscious when other personalities of themselves are talking. They might, the, the main person they might check out, same as the Ouija. So it really, the work I did as a professional really transferred with the, my work with Ouija as well. I just saw it very, in very similar ways. I have to be really careful. I'm not doing therapy by any by any means on the board. Mm-hmm. I joke around. I might say tongue and cheek Ouija therapy. Truth is, I, I would never practice therapy on the board. That's, that's not even it's way beyond. It's not even part of my license, and I would never do that. Be that would be just um, unethical, and it'd be incorrect to to the, the, my culture of therapists and and my colleagues. I would never do that. But just but I, I do say that because it's very therapeutic. I was going to say it must be therapeutic to use it though, and and to be able to to achieve communication with these other consciousnesses. Absolutely. Is. <laughs> it, it is, it is. And, and the results, um, uh, the feedback I'm getting from this many shows, and yes, people don't agree with me, and that's fine. Please, if your li- listeners don't agree, have them call and they share their stuff. And, I, and I'm open. I'm open to it all. And Because, you know, it, nobody, should, nobody should believe me. I mean, don't believe me. That's what I want to say. Well, but when you're with me and I can do, show you an experience, you may just be moved and touched by it. And, that, and that's what my message is here at Luigi. It's really to reach out and say, Open, open up your hearts, open up, open up yourself, and realize that the world is so much larger, and so are you, and so are, the, so are your own powers. Your empowerment about yourself is so much larger than you ever knew, and that in itself can affect great change and growth in ourselves, so we can live, you know, in, in, in our highest truths, our highest truths, or, or our potentials, our own potentialities, you know, it's the you know, it's, a, it's always a, it's, it's always the growth process. It's always, there's always struggles, there's always hardships. But the process, if I have another way to help myself and help others, I'm going to share it. And that, that's my message with the Ouija, and that's my message with the book. And I notice now that your Ouija board is moving. Your plant is moving around your board right now. Yes, I, and Aaron has gone over there and joined in with the guys. And what even, do you, oh, I'm, excuse me, Tim. I was going to say what they want to do is take this letter, the numbers, write these down. You want to have a, rock, a person that's a scribe, so the Aaron can be the scribe, and you write them down, what, just put them in one long chain, and we make sense of it later. At first, it'll come out a lot of gibberish. You might have a lot of extra letters and numbers in there, but eventually it's, it gets to the point where there's sentences and paragraphs and full-on pages. It's crazy. Sorry, I was just handing them pencil and paper so they can do that. Oh, but great. You mentioned that you know some people won't agree with you, and, and you will uh, suffer some... Uh, you, you know, some raised eyebrows and and some uh, people who will kind of call out your beliefs to some degree. But it's amazing to me that a lot of people who are probably scoffing at you, at you suggesting that there is a positive benefit to using the Ouija board, they're scoffing because they're so ensconced in that negative energy that is around it. Uh, you know, they might not believe that positive things can happen from using it, but they sure as heck believe that negative things can. And it's so demonized, that's why. It's been so demonized, and, and it's hard to, to pull religion out of it. Everybody, when they see it, they go, well, that's bad, and, and you shouldn't have that, and that's evil. And I'm like, it's not evil. It's a board I could break in half and burn it in my fire pit outside. It's not evil. What's evil is it, how we use it, right. our intentions. That's what's evil. We demonize something. It's like ostracizing a part of ourselves. Then you start judging. That's bad. That's good. Then, then we start demonizing parts inside of ourselves, saying, oh, I'm so bad. Oh, I'm such a screw-up. Why do that? That's what my book talks about, that dualism, the polarities of opposites. We need to bring those together, and we can finally bring that together, whether it's using the board and learning that it's not a bad tool. It may not be your tool. It definitely is my tool. I've been very successful with it. But we learn that we can also balance those things within ourselves. That's what my next book will be about that. Balance that, that stuff within ourselves so we don't feel like we have to make all these judgments. That's bad. That's good. It's more, it's more about... You have to just make judgments in, the, in your life, but not necessarily judge yourself, because we're just all trying to get through life and, you know, do the best we can. So why make it harder on ourselves? And if I can help people learn that, too, through the use of the board, and, ha- and have them, maybe they can gain some guidance and insight from themselves through it, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. It's just a tool, again. It's just a tool. It does nothing until the operator works with it. That's it, period. And, so, and speaking of it being just a tool, I mean, uh, there was a time when a lot of people's uh, – interaction with the paranormal was only through the use of these boards but now we're in a different era now we have different technology that we can use to try and create some sort of a bridge between us and the other side and you know the same people who say oh well i won't use a ouija board are the same people that have no problem going into a reportedly haunted location with their tape recorder 
on record and, you know, asking questions of thin air and pulling out all these different meters. And it's all the same thing. It's all just opening up the lines of communication between you and whatever's there. Exactly. EVP, that's a great example. Your psychomantium is great. That I know Raymond Moody does a lot of work with that. That actually, that's Greek. That came, and they used to, that was like going to the oracles when you look inside a mirror or stare into the water. And you would, and then you start seeing things start morphing and you get a message, you might get an image, and that's what they used to do. I mean, see, it's, this is, this all becomes new again, and things just keep cycling, and all these tools. And, um, and I love when you, I love that you noticed it yourself when you said, you're here you are in high end, cutting edge technology, wireless communication, you know, crazy stuff with phones that just go, can go off. I mean, our, our self our can our structure can't even support those phones and what they can do 100% yet. And here I am working with this old tool of communication. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's just being able to have different variety of ways of communicating. That's what it is, as you mentioned with some examples you gave. Well, and one thing that I'll ask you, and, and if this doesn't fit in with your own personal beliefs of, of, of what is out there in the universe, understandable, but uh, I have heard stories of people who have used uh, both Ouija boards and ghost boxes and, and you know, these, these Frank's boxes that are out there uh, mm. and have been able to communicate with extraterrestrial entities. I mean, Frank himself, uh, who uh, actually created the Frank's boxes, uses them now pretty much solely exclusively to speak with uh, otherworldly intelligences. And uh, right. is that anything that you've ever encountered? Have you ever uh, touched upon a consciousness from somewhere other than planet Earth? Yes, I have. I have. And I, I can only say so much about it. It's, 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 it's hard for me to open up about that one. Sure. Um, I, I, I touched on it in another show recently, and, and you know, it, it's so far out there sometimes. Uh, that, but it is and it's not. It's like, I'm only ready to say so much. But yes, I have. And, I, I've, and I'll just share this. It, it was like a collective uh, consciousness that came through, almost like a, a soul group, we might call it that. Mm-hmm. But they've never, they're not from this, this the galaxy. And that's how they dress themselves. And then, you know, then I'm also talking to these entities, and most of the ones I talk to now have never been born. They've never been incarnated anywhere. They're an energy like, I don't know, they could be like an angelic form. They don't call themselves that. Um, they do have specific names for me. Um, it's, very, it's personal, but um, they, they come through. They're the ones I mostly talk to now, and it, it's gradual. You know, it's very interesting, and I, and I love the whole alien thing that, you know, they're doing with the Frank Fox and all that stuff. Um, and, and also, uh, a lot of psychics are doing it and writing books about Pleiadians and all, all these. It, it, it's, it's very fascinating that we can, you know, if you think about it, our consciousness, as we learn more techniques to use, we can really expand out there and communicate with almost anything and everything, and we probably don't need our wireless phones. You know, <laughs> or, you know, you know it's, it's like uh, almost like telepathy or something. I mean, but I think the issue is, is that this kind of helps develop that for somebody, because we're not quite there. We don't need... Mm-hmm a huge portion of our, of our brain or our heart or our body as we could. And so I think if we work with these tools, not only does it help us show people and help us learn there's more out there, it helps us grow spiritually. And also, I believe it helps us grow those parts of our brain we don't quite use yet. Well, We start seeing different kinds of communications or connections that, that come at another level. It's, it's like it, oh, developing intuition. It helps with these things. And that's why... I recommend it, but again, because it's been demonized and people see it as demonic, that's what they're going to get. So it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You've got to approach it um, really with, with the right type of attitude and, and energy. Well, I understand, and this might take a step out of the, the Ouija realm necessarily for right now, but I understand how using the Ouija board might help open up your mind and, and help you be able to achieve these um we'll say higher wavelengths of communication, but, and I know that this might be counter uh, productive for your business ventures, but in terms of today's modern technologies, do you see them as also expanding uh, our ability to communicate in that way? Or is the fact that we can have a phone in our pocket and we can reach out and touch anybody at any time through the use of uh, an actual electronic device, does that limit the expansion possibilities of our minds? I mean, are we, are we stunting well, we our own our own personal mental growth by relying so much on telecommunication? Not at all. I, I think growth, technology, all this growth is great. Personal growth, technological growth, and now think about it, SETI. We've got this large array of satellites. Those are actually sending out signals, and they're receiving them, and that's communication. That's, to, that's actually to see what else is out there to communicate with it, right? That's what they're doing. Think about people pick up phones, that a person's on the phone and talks to them. The person's already dead, right? So they are using our technology, too. And they can come through our wireless phones. I've heard of stories of that. 
They're coming through the EVP. So they're able to use our technology. It's once again, it technology is a vibration, especially the wireless. I love it because it's, it's, it's electromagnetic frequency, and it's, um, it, it's the energy, the frequency. It's, it's the frequency that's vibrating, and, and it matches. So that's how the signal works. You're on a, you're on a certain um, bandwidth. You're, you're, you're on a certain um, wavelength. And same with, same with um, our board, same with your energy of yourself. This helps psychics are able to communicate with um, animals or, or without the board. People that have passed on. Some people say they talk to trees. I mean, you know what I mean? They talk to everything. It's because they have the ability to, to go into that level of um, energy, to match that vibration. And that's what that technology is, is, is a vibration, and the board, and all this, and it's all great. And we're using technology right now to, to communicate. Well, speaking of using the board, uh, what's happening over there, guys? Are you guys getting anything? There seems to have been a lot of movement from that planchette. Random letters and numbers. You might have to decide that later. Okay. And is that is that common, Karen? Do you usually have to, uh, you know, take take down the notes and, and then look for maybe a bigger meaning later on, or or do you get? I'm sure you get a lot of direct uh, messages from your use of it, but for for those who are kind of jumping into it for the first time. Do you, can you take everything that you get through it at face value or might no. it have a deeper meaning? Because, you know, our psychic friends, uh, especially our, our good friend, Spirit Medium Tiffany, uh, mm -hmm. she always says, you know, take this message and hold on to it because it might mean something later. And is that similar for what comes through with the boards? That's, that's very good advice. Yeah, it can happen that way. And, and to answer your question about when you first start out doing it, it's, it's gibberish. It's random letters and numbers. It's... The board, okay, for them to communicate, for them, energies, consciousness, dead, ghosts, whatever, people, for them to come through, it takes a lot of energy to cross that, that, that barrier, that veil, right? And it, for us, too. And it requires a lot of patience. And, and when you're working with the board in the beginning, even when I'm working with, on the board with somebody new, it requires still a lot of patience because they have nobody been using it as, much, as long as I have. And there are a few people throughout my life I've done the board with, just a handful, who have been able to do it very well with me. So when I'm with these people, I say, let's do it, because I know we're going to get sentences and we're going to rely on the message. And when I say rely on it, you know, it's not 100%. It's just like any message that comes from the other side. But it, 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 it comes through very clearly. Um, you know, there's still some people I'm working with that it works pretty well, but we have to pull a couple letters out to get that word. And then, and then, we, and then when that happens like that, our spirit friend on the other side will, may say, speak, speak amongst yourselves right now, and then we'll talk. And someone's like on our own dialogue, keep your hands on the board, then the board participates as we're talking, it's answering and, and doing its part, like, like a three-way conversation. And that way we can get the message more clearly by actually discussing it. And the more we do this with these individuals on the earth, other entities, or consciousness, we develop the ability to trust the movement. It's got it's very much about trust. It's very much about allowing and trusting, and then following it, and then also having the, the, the intuition inside our stuff, I call it our gut response, mm -hmm. you know, down in your second, second um, chakra area, um, sort of plexus and down, where we just know, you guys got feeling, is that good? Is, is it a good entity? Is it a good energy? And then after you do it enough times, and I say enough times, probably years, you really can begin to rely on some of the friendships you made on the other side who are your regulars, they're your staple, and they'll, be, they'll help you when the animals want to communicate, they'll help when somebody just got in and has a hard time communicating, and they'll kind of be like bouncers, like I've called them bouncers before in the show, or they are also like the messenger. They'll help come through and speak when that person can't, it can't really communicate, or they'll help the animal interpret what the animal's feeling so that they can speak to me in English, or what the fetus is feeling when the fetus doesn't have a language yet. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So there's these, you develop after a while. They don't come immediately. I have heard of some people get on the board and things coming right away. Um, I would not trust that. I would say build up, build up the ability to really set your intentions about the board, around the board, the light, and then as you work with it quite a few times, then you can start looking at it more. Okay, this can be viable. Hold on to this message. Now, I've kept records and journals throughout all the years I've been doing it. Well, I shouldn't say all. When I was younger, no. But when I got to the age of, of, of about 22, 23, 24, somewhere in that era, when I was out, uh, I was also being a therapist as well. That's when I really kept all my journals, and I have them to this day forward of all these different sessions I have. And I go back and see the messages, and it's just some things are just really crazy and profound. <laughs> well, to the least. 
You, you mentioned, you know, uh, communicating with a fetus that doesn't have language yet. And uh, two of our friends in the chat room, Low Battery Dave and, and the Paranormal Pirate, they're, they're kind of being somewhat facetious with these questions about what happens if the intelligence you're communicating with is uh, illiterate or doesn't know how to spell or, you know, doesn't speak the same language as you. But it's, it, does the board work? Is it a direct... Um, a direct movement to the letters by the spirit, or is it kind of they're sending out the message and it's your way of interpreting it through the board? No, it's not my way. They're sending out the message, and there's a feeling that it's energy, it's consciousness, it's, it's what's happening on the other side is they're actually working with them as, as, a, as a helper, as a guide, to get the message where I can understand it. This takes a while to start talking to other consciousness and languages or, or other kinds of communication because... They need, you need to have somebody saw it on your side that you work with and they give a good message to you and it comes through clearly to be able to help, help them come through with the message. You see what I'm saying? So it's not like the fetus is talking any, or, or somebody who, who died in another um, culture and, and another um, uh, language. They're, they're communicating with others on their side who can help, help them interpret so it comes through in English. Some of that, as soon as I had some words come through in Spanish, that's happened a few times. And I'm okay with that because I know a little Spanish, broken Spanish. And, and it's kind of interesting. I, I had somebody come through and, and speak to me in Spanish, uh, uh, for one session, and then after that, was able to interpret it to English. And this person, then this person who died, did not speak English. But we used the help of um, my people on your side, my guides, my energies, to help them interpret it so I can understand it. That, that's what it all it was. And so I can communicate it back to them. So it's like, okay, so example, let's say somebody's giving a speech and you have somebody signing. Okay, so they're, they're communicating what that person's saying. Or you have, somebody giving a, you have somebody talking and there's an interpreter there who's doing, interpreting it into another language. It, it, imagine that happening on the other side. That's what's going on there. Okay. And I noticed that there was some rapid movement over there, Moniz. Was that you kind of just, you know, clearing out, clearing out the board? Yeah, just recentering. Okay. Just so nothing, nothing changed over there. No, no better communication coming through. Random letters. Okay. Should we try? Ask, should we? Have you been asking some direct questions? Actually, no. Uh, maybe we should try some direct questions. Well, you. Get I agree. Try to make not yes and no questions. Try to try to make it more more open than any questions. So we have to spell. So yes and no is is it, just too easy, right? So you can ask a question that's more open ended. Why don't we take a question from the chat room or audience? Absolutely. If anybody has a question that they'd like to share uh, and, and maybe have us ask the board, give us a call, 508-996-0500, 1-877-996-1420. Perhaps you have a question, too, for our guest, Karen Dahlman. Feel free to call in and ask a question of her as well. And uh, in the chat room at Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com is another option. Uh, you can also email, although my chat room just went down on my phone when we said that. Thanks, Weedy Board. And uh, we also have uh, the ability to email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com. And you can also tweet us your questions on Twitter at SpookySC, which I'll sign into that as well so that we can check that out if we need to. And uh, But Karen, maybe you have a question uh, that you want us to ask the board that maybe, you know, a little inside information on your part that you might be able to help us uh, make connection with something out there. Okay. Uh, you want me to go before one of your listeners goes? Or do you, or oh, you sure. Like? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, let me think here. If, how, about something, uh, how about something for maybe something for your show? Would you like to know a little bit maybe more about what's going on with your show? Something like, um, let's see. Uh, um, so come me here, sure. Tim. <laughs> help me, too. And I'll, well, then I'll formulate it. Ask, ask the board and, and uh, you know, to avoid a yes or no question, we'll right. ask them what month this year we can expect to be syndicated nationally. Perfect, you just asked it. So you asked what month this year do you expect to be syndicated, is that right? Yes, because it better be this year. Oh, yeah, that's just going to catch fire. Oh, I love that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, so if it, the fire, fire extinguisher is under the, under the uh, counter here if it does catch fire. <laughs> and listen, you can ask for a number, give you a number, or just spell the month out. So let's, so, so let's just spell. When I, when I work with the spirits, I, I don't act like they're not there. I just talk out loud. I say, hey, guys, if, if it's easier for you to use a number... Um, that's fine, or you can spell the month. I'm talking to them right now, or you can spell it out if you like. All right, so that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that it says um, what month are we in. We're coming up Excellent. to the end of March. So, uh, March, so uh, let's hope that it says, uh, you know, April or May. But, uh, again, we're not trying to influence in any way, so hopefully... Oh, yeah. You just influenced it. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to influence more the uh, the network executives <laughs> than I am the oh. board. 
<laughs> so if they're listening, hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll pick up on that. But that's, well, I'm going to say I'd like to see it get syndicated um, tomorrow. Yeah, that would be great. So day of month, Easter, wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. It'd, it'd be it'd, it'd be very appropriate. Uh, so right. Uh, I'm noticing there's some movement over there, guys. Are you getting anything? I can't think of a month that uh, has a Q in it, so. <laughs> That's great. Uh, is there a Q in cancellation? <laughs> it just sounds like if it's not. That'd be, even, that'd be even worse. So uh, when, when you are using uh, the board and you are, uh, you, you know, connecting with your spirit friends who have helped uh, guide you uh, professionally and, and with your book, uh, but you always said too that you also said too that you don't ever use it alone. So are these messages coming through while you're just having a session with the board, like with a friend, uh, and, and you have to kind of decipher, gee, what's meant for me to kind of put aside for my own use, and what's meant for this conversation? Correct. Yes, and it, yes, that's how it works. Um, yeah, I don't do I don't do it alone. I do it with somebody else. Again, I want that witness. I want to make sure we both, you know. It, it, it's just too easy to, for your fine motor skills to just take over, and I don't want to do that. And I don't, I don't like the idea of, of the idea of maybe channeling something on the board by myself either. It's not, it's not a fearful thing. It's just that I feel like it's better in twos and, and, and pairs. And the fact they actually give directions, if you look on the box, back of the box, you say it's preferable to have two people, and they used to say man and woman, because I think the balance, again, of the, the two sexes really helps out a lot. In fact, I do it very, very well with one of my brothers, and I think it's because it's male, female, and we're also close. And and the fact that um, it, there's it, yeah, there's this relationship there, and so it works really well with us. And whenever I do see him, we we get together and we'll do it. And um, plus, he can let go. He doesn't have any agenda with it. So for him, it, it's he just lets go, and that's the best person I want to work with because. It's not like they're afraid. They're not worried that people are going to push it. They just he just lets go and doesn't think about that, and then the board just goes, and we'll get full on addresses and numbers and names and places and things of that nature and paragraphs and the words. They're not they're not mixed up, you know. They're not they, they make sense, and it, that's that requires again that kind of that connection, and, and it, re- it comes from you know we're brother and sister, but it also comes from you know you have a good friend that you develop a relationship with. It only works as good, too, with the person you're with and your relationship with that person. Um, if there's like maybe just, like, you, you have your two maths together, that, that should probably work between the two of them because, you know, they work together. There's a relationship there. They, they know each other on some level, and so that helps. Um, I have done people that, I won't do it just anybody, it's just anybody off the street kind of thing, but I have before when I was younger, and I noticed that we all have, we all have different beliefs about it, and so it just gets really confusing. Um, so learning to use it, you know, in a, in a systematic way, if you can, if you want to call it, we use it systematically, standardized systematic way of a certain time, certain people, a certain ritual around how how you open it, how you close it. That helps develop the the ability and the energy to to work with the messages and get the messages. Well, we do have some breaking news from the board. Uh, we have uh, a message that did come through, Moniz. What 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 came through the board? The word was guallo. Now. If you know Spanish or Portuguese, that means quarter. So you think that means this quarter or the next quarter will be syndicated? Ooh, we're coming into a new quarter. I like that. I like I like the I sound of that. Quarter. Oh, oh, excuse me. Monday's a new quarter. There you go. You're coming into the second quarter. Well, that sounds good to me. Let's just go with that. Let's not push that question any further. <laughs> Let's just take that so I can leave here with a good feeling. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I do have one question, though. It's interesting that it was in a different language, though, and, although we do have a lot of Portuguese and Spanish speaking around but here. So. There's a station that runs through this station that is on. Sorry, go ahead, Karen. I was going to say somebody there must, must speak Spanish. Who knows Spanish there? Oh, I think Moniz knows some. I, a bit. Yeah. Oh, so it, it, it's going to match who's there. That, that's her board, is that right? It's not spelled correctly, but it... I said the word is not spelled correctly, but I know that the word guado means quarter. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting. It doesn't know it's spelled right because it's, it's like, it, it, what, no, it's hard to push the letters around. What I get a lot, if I have a friend of mine, okay, this is an example. I have one person I do the Ouija with who really loves to do shorthand texting, like letter R, letter U, mm-hmm. R, U, or C, U, right? And so the, when the Ouija I do with her, we get a lot of that that comes through like that. It'll do the shorthand R U, or it'll do Q 
QS for questions. It's a little shorthand. It starts with abbreviations, or it'll spell words phonetically. And that's just because that's the best way they can. Maybe work with spellers, or it's the best way they can get it out so we can, you know, enunciate it, pronounce it. You know what I mean? Well, you're texting so with the spirit of a 13. You're yeah. communicating the spirit of a 13 year old girl. <laughs> you're texting on the Ouija board. We, it's really. We do have a question from the chat room uh, that I do want to ask before we run out of time. And, and uh, uh, Paranormal Pirate wants to know if you are storing a box, sh uh, storing a board, should it be stored in the box or should it be left out? No, I, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. For, um, just so you know, I, one, uh, two boards are in a box. And that one is my board that I use, my all time favorite. The two I use the most <clears throat> um, that I use, uh, one's a glow in dark Ouija. Traveling Ouija, <laughs> and one's the original Ouija, which looks like the one right there. That's that's oh, not the mis no, it's not the mystifying one. It's the one that the common one you see today. That um, those I keep in a box, um, but the other ones I have out. They're decor. They're out. They're outside of my house, and they're lined up, and they're 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 part of my decor. And it's sort of interesting about this. If somebody's not into Ouija, they can walk in my home. They only notice them. As soon as they're open to it, then they notice them, and they have a lot of questions to ask. And I purposely keep them out because. To me, it's, 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 it's um, I don't know, it, it's, they're, they're, they're really neat to look at. They're very, quite, you know, crafted very uniquely and sure, differently. Each so one. many of them are so beautiful. Right? They are. Some of them are really beautiful. I have this one that uh, has a haji, I call it haji on it, <laughs> um, from Johnny Quest, but it, it's, it's, um, it's a swami. And that one, I just love that one in my, in my cocktail board. That one's really cool, too. And I got a 1902 board. So I keep all these boards out. So it's really up to the person. It's not like energy and spirit's going to come. But wait, let me back up on that, what I just said. Not quite true. This is what I, can I share something about, about the boards being out? I, I, this sure. is kind of an interesting story. Um, I, had, I bought the 1902 board. I, I got it, and I put it in my house. Usually I will clean them. When I'm going to clean them, I will, I will um, wipe them down, and I will put white light around them, and I will just do like I'm opening the board and closing it, kind of ceremony kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe do some sage, light a candle, talk, and then, I, and then it's fine. But what I did is I brought that 1902 board, 1902 board out, set it down, didn't do that. Okay, that's not, that's probably, it was probably about uh, maybe two years ago. What happened was the spirits that were attached to that board, and I don't know why I did this. I, I know better than this. I woke up in the middle of the night, and they were coming, they were moving towards my bedroom door, and I could, I could literally see them, literally see them coming, and there was one gentleman in front, and I, I know who this gentleman was, and he stopped them all, and I opened my eyes, and each one, and they saw my eyes, and they won't come in my room all the way because they, that, that, that's what he's, that's what he's bounded off. I don't allow anything to come in my room when I'm sleeping. Um, but they came as far as they could, and they were waiting for me to see them. <laughs> open my eyes, and there they were. And um, as soon as they opened my eyes, they all started going, and they were like, shucks, you know, I didn't hear anything, but I could see them going, dang it. You know, and then they just dissipated, and they all backed away. And I went, okay, there's too many here, and this is like this. I immediately got up, took the board, and I wiped it off, and I said, okay, put this away for now, and then I did a cleaning ceremony with it, because that, that, you do that, at least you're going to have them out. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you, you, you know, you just say something to it, you clean it, sage it, you know, you burn sage, burn incense, a light candle, and just say, white light, it's all good, I, you know, I, I respect who is here, I release you, this board is clean, that's really all you need to do. Well, we will definitely do that uh, before we wrap things up with the board here in the studio tonight. Uh, I want to take Please. a step back to when we were talking about the idea of why you don't want to uh, work with the board by yourself. And, and this might be our final question for tonight, but uh, you, you mentioned that it could be your own motor skills that are moving the planchette, if that's the case. Uh, but also, could it be your own subconscious? Could you, if you did use a board on your own, could it kind of give you a deeper look into your own subconscious with the thoughts that you might not be aware of uh, normally? Absolutely. Yes, and, and you know, there's an element of your subconscious coming through anyway, and, and I, I try to explain it the best I can. I think I'm becoming a little more succinct in explaining it. You're, you're matching with this energy, and your conscious, subconscious, um, and your higher self, and the entity's consciousness, and the person sitting across from me, they're all merging to allow the message to come through. I actually feel, I actually feel, and, I, and now I'm starting to get images in the last quite uh, several years, and more than that, probably the last 10, 15 years, I get images, too, as I start speaking to the different entities. So there's a merging of energies that happens, and that's why it's really important to do this safely. And so 
this all well, this stuff will be in my book, and and I'll, I'll get into details because I've learned so much over the years, and then I've and I'm actually learning so much more as I continue to ask my spirit uh, friends questions about what it's like on other the other existences, and and you know pre birth and all that stuff and death. But but yeah, you do it yourself. That there's that there's that risk of just doing your subconscious, and I'm merging with that other consciousness. But you know, people do it all the time with automatic writing. I I do a lot of journaling, and I can actually journal where they are coming through when I'm writing. So I, I guess you can go automatic writing where they come and talk to me, and I just let it flow. So there's an there's an aspect of that I'm already doing through writing. But um, I, I just I don't I think people do it and they're not experienced enough to use it correctly. That's what, that's what people do. I believe there is an there can be um, a takeover. There can be attachments. Um, you, you allow this energy to merge with you. It's, it's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, never. <laughs> it's never a good thing. That's my disclaimer. So, you know, use it, use it with very much reverence, respect. Use it with another person. Um, and only open it, you know, under, under a good vibration and, and, and a clear consciousness and a clear mind. And then close it the same way. And then walk away from it, you know. Don't do it every day. <laughs> well, guys, you, Don't. Said, you guys said you had something coming through? We're gross. The word gross came through? Yes. Wow. What is that to my friends? Are you guys there? <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what they thought was gross. Gross. That's, That's I love that. They, interesting. Now, now, what were you guys, what did you guys ask it or what, what was in your mind when, you, when the word gross came up? Let's, let's see what, what was going on with you. Any question that was asked? Or? Not by me. We actually, have, uh, we actually have a very terrible stench outside the studio here uh, when we leave the show each week. Uh, the septic system of the, uh, I guess, the local restaurant around here or something. Uh, but there's there's something that happens toward the end of the night where we get, it could be the sea air too, we're, we're, uh, we're right near the ocean. But something happens mm-hmm. and we get this strong odor when we leave. So maybe it's just predicting what we're going to smell when we leave. Uh, we've only, <laughs> it, it is pretty gross. We've only got a few minutes left here, uh, so why don't we try to close things out with the board and, and do so uh, in the proper manner. What, what would be the best way, Karen, for us to do that? Well, what you want to do is you keep your hands on the board as you are, and I'll just spe- I, I, one person needs to say it, and just kind of in your mind, you know, we're getting ready to close it down, keep the white light there, and I'll, I'll go, ahead and go into the process now. We want to thank our community, our, our guys, or angels or entities on your side who spoke to us um, tonight during this show. Um, we, we appreciate you coming through. Uh, we thank you for your time there. We, th- we thank our, our guests and listeners and the people who are doing the board as well, the, the Matt and Matt. We also uh, want to put white light around the board. We ask that it comes to an end now, and that as we leave this session and as we all go back to our own lives, that we stay in that light, and that light stays with us. And the board just closes up, and it goes back to where it belongs, if that's in a box or a bay or back on a shelf. And, we, and when we do that, you take your hands off the board, you say thank you, and then you, you, you end it. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you guys for doing that, and thank you, Karen, for walking us through it. Now that we know the the proper way to do it, and uh, now that our listeners do as well, hopefully they, uh, you know, they utilize that, and they they definitely keep it respectful and reverential. Uh, again, we are coming up uh, on the end of the show here, uh, but uh, Karen's book is called The Spirit of Creativity: Embodying Your Soul's Passion. If you want to pick that up from Amazon, you can do so. Uh, it, I mean, and, and really, it's it's a great price, only fourteen thirty eight to get the book, or you can get the Kindle version for eight ninety seven. And uh, right, if somebody has a Kindle and they bring it up to you, you'll sign sign the screen in a magic marker, right? That's right, and, That's and you can also read you can read the first few chapters of the book too. I mean, uh, excuse me, yeah, I think the first two chapters you can you can actually look at and take a peek at. Excellent. So there you go. So definitely uh, jump on Amazon and find it. The Spirit of Creativity. Karen Dahlman is her name. Uh, Karen, thank you so much for joining us, and and hopefully uh, we we can go to you with all of our questions, Ouija, in the future. Sounds great, Tim. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you both of the Matt for doing this session. Thank you. Have a great night and a happy Easter. Happy Easter to your listeners. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, that about does it for this week's show. And just want to remind everybody that there will not be a show next Saturday night because we'll, we will be at the Houghton Mansion. Uh, if you want to join us at the Houghton Mansion, I mean, if you got to get your spooky fix, then you might as well hang out with us. Uh, so you can get your ticket by going to legendtrips.com. There are still some available, uh, both the $149 ticket, which includes the Saturday investigation, which will be over 12 hours spent 
at the Houghton Mansion itself. Uh, and also the Friday Night Paranormal Party at the Haunted Freight Yard Pub right down the street from the Houghton Mansion and within walking distance of the hotel where almost everybody's staying, too. So that's, that helps when you're leaving. And uh, Or if you just want to join us for the investigation itself, it's $125. Maybe you can only get away for the weekend or you just want to spend one night out in North Adams. Uh, those tickets are available for $125. And it's legendtrips.com is the website. And stay tuned to the blog at wbsm.com slash spooky dash south coast all week long uh, for more information. And also, that's where you can find, I'm going to be putting up the show audio and the YouTube video from tonight as well. So if you want to check out what was going on with the board, uh, you can do it there. And of course, you can also get it from iTunes and YouTube itself and everywhere that you always find the show, we will be there waiting for you. So until next time, for Matt Costa, for Matt Moniz, for Chris Balzano, I'm Tim Weisberg, and we want you all to stay spooktacular. Station the South Coast Your station for, for local South news, Coast. talk, AM weather, and sports. WBSM, WBSM New Bedford, AM 1420, WBSM. From ABC News, I'm Todd Ant. Are we on the same page or not? China says the U.S. is partly at fault for North Korea's recent provocations. ABC's Gloria Riviera.